Hey guys, it's Drew with the Future Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. When CAC is closed, we build submissions for them. And so we're going to show you one in this episode that Trent supplied for us. But yeah, let's get this video started. So first of all, I'm not an OSU fan. It's just a hat that I found that uh, fits my head. Uh, the second thing I want to talk to you guys about is how are, the, are you guys hedging against inflation right now? I know food is up, gas is up, uh, energy is going to be going up too. Um, how are you kind of faring this summer? I know a few things that we've done, we've you know reduced our costs in a lot of ways of how much we're spending at the pump, but also what we're buying. Um, just let us know down below what you guys are doing to kind of counteract that because it's very interesting and we want to implement some of that in what we're doing. Um, like I said at the beginning of the video, we're going to talk over some coins that Trent sent us. There's a lot of redundant ones in there, but there's a lot of ones that are kind of unique and interesting and that allows us to speak about are they CAC worthy or are they the right grade that we feel they are. Um, a lot of interesting insight that we're going to try to provide for you in this video, so make sure to stay tuned and let's get into these coins. So the 4th of July is right around the corner. Uh, we've been getting a lot of nice coins in and we want to get back where we can. If you guys want free shipping um, through 4th of July, just use code FREEDOM at checkout. Uh, just something that we can do to give back to some people and uh, really enjoy the holiday. We're gonna be putting up a big flag out here, which we normally do for 4th of July. So we'll try to include that in one of these videos just because we love our country so much. And that's kind of what brought us into coins to begin with, just the love of our country. But uh, yeah, done with this announcement. Let's just finally get into these coins. Alrighty guys, just made it up to the light box. I want to show you a few coins here. Just my analysis, my point of view on them. This is a 1901 Barber Half Dollar. This one's great. XF45 by PCGS. First thing to kind of catch up on here is a little bit of discoloration underneath this star. And also a little bit under the chin. Overall, the surfaces look pretty nice and original. Uh, there's kind of a few, there's kind of a big spot here that might have, I don't know, might take away from the coin. I do think, uh, you know, most of the time, like we're talking about with older coins, seated mainly, and barbers, is that the darker they are sometimes, the less likely they are to cack. So there's kind of like an equilibrium between having luster and uh, not having any luster at all. And so most of the time, people send in coins that look very white, or they send coins that look very dark. And I think cack is somewhere in the middle. And I don't know if this one would pass, honestly. I would give this one... Um, you know, I would give this one a no cack personally. That's just something that I've uh, picked up on and seen over these past uh, little while. And uh, just got to shoot straight with you. This one is a 1911 Barber Quarter, rated AU58. What you notice about this one is there's still a lot of remaining luster on the coin. Uh, there's kind of just some gradual rim toning on it. Nothing too serious or crazy. No surface area issues that I could see. No wipes um, or, you know, because most of the time they used to wipe these coins a lot and uh, I think a lot of bad coins are in straight grade holders and that's just my opinion or it's just uh, something that I haven't learned yet but when you take a look at this coin there's still a lot of remaining luster here in the center of the coin uh, a little bit of distracting rim color uh, I don't know if that would hold it back personally uh, I do think it's just an evenly graded barber uh, quarter uh, and I would think this one would be um, a B, not a B coin, but uh, I would get a green CAC. I'm going to start going and using green CAC, gold CAC, or no CAC, um, just because it's just easier for me. I, I'm, the definitions evidently are very screwed up. This is a 1900O uh, Barber Dime Grade XF40. This one uh, has some, I don't know if it's been retoned or not. Um, as you can see, there's just kind of like this green caked in here. And they're almost, when you hug up against the face and around here and around the details, it kind of seems to be like a different layer. And when this one, when this kind of toning filled in this green layer, this dark layer here, um, that kind of, for me, is interesting. I don't know how to perceive that, um, you know, for face value. But I do think it's just an interesting coin overall. I didn't want to be too redundant and show you too many different coins, or too many of the same coins, rather. Uh, we could see kind of a uh, discoloration right here on the rim, but a lot of it might be just considered toning. So 
it really all just depends on what um, you know what John thinks is attractive or unattractive and you know, I think it's interesting but I don't know if it is CAC worthy I would call this one a no CAC are you enjoying today's video so far if you are please leave a like comment your thoughts on the coins we're showing off with Trent's, uh, Trent's kind of collection and his inventory. I think there's a lot of great things in there that'll do well at CAC. Uh, and also, like, what do you uh, what do you guys think? Should we should we make a shirt? Not something like this, but something that's kind of numismatist, uh, you know, kind of the coin space. I think it would be pretty cool. Just comment down below if you think that's a pretty neat idea. And subscribe if you're new because uh, new videos every single week. I want to talk about grading, I want to talk about CAC, I want to talk about our coin adventures. And we want to bring you along. So let's get back to today's video. The next coin I want to show you is this 19, 1892 Barber Dime, graded AU55 by PCGS. Um, this one passed, and I think it's a decent coin. Still has a little nice little remaining luster on there. You can really see the circulation on the face here. Uh, you know, it has a, some a little bit of rim color as well, which I think is nice. Um, big hit here on the chin. When you flip it over, it's got some nice color on there as well. I don't think this one really has been through any old, uh, you know, terrible old cleaning, but I do think it might have had a little bit of old cleaning on it. Uh, but you know, it did get neck graded down, I think, a little bit for just possibly that conclusion. It's graded AU55 and based on its grade, but I do think this one has a good shot at getting a green sticker. And uh, yeah, can't wait to see what that one weighs out at. And the reason why we're kind of getting these coins is because we like to help out Trent but also we're trying to see if we're, cor if we're correct on our opinions even if they you know didn't cack. This is a 1916 Barber Dime grade MS62 by PCGS. The main thing that caught my eye was this dark spot here. I don't know if he'll weigh that as environmental now. See back then they were a lot stricter on grades but also they were very lenient on some other things. Sometimes hairlines are on, in these coins or PVC, just like how we talked about in previous videos, there might also be environmental damage. I don't know if that will be a problem with this spot right here. Uh, another thing that really catches my eye, which might be a strike through. So we see this, this uh, kind of scratch here all the way down through the coin. That might be something that happened at the mint or that might be a, a serious scratch that ended up neck grading this coin down so uh, personally I, don't, I wouldn't really know what to say until John gives an analysis on this I hope he leaves a sticker for me that would be like more amazing than anything but taking a look at the reverse here I think the reverse is really nice and clean no issues at all a little bit of haze as you can see when you aim it down a little bit but I mean overall really nice stunning coin and uh, you know for the time being, I'll grade this one uh, a no cac just based on that scratch. I'm just not sure if John believes it's a strike through or it's a, a deep scratch on the coin. And so it's left to him to, to kind of uh, determine that and grade appropriately. So this one I sold to Trent a while ago just because it had really nice looking luster to the coin. And when you take a look, it's just, you know, the luster is really nice and beaming on there. And uh, I thought it was just a really beautiful coin if it didn't cack or did cack. And so. Like I said before, not too crazy in understanding of how CAC works with barbers, and so I've been trying to get better at it, and Trent's helping us out with that. See these spots here? That Those spots are a little distracting for the fields, but I don't know if that'll weigh too much into John's analysis of the coin. Uh, when you flip it over to the obverse, you can kind of see these scratches here on the face. I'm not sure what happened there. Um, that's kind of a little bit, uh, it kind of bothers me a little bit. And there's this kind of two dings here as well. A few dings right there. But I think this one, um, you know, based on the grade that I see currently, I think this one would have a shot at getting a green sticker. The luster is nice, very good eye appeal. Just those kind of few issues on the face that really bother me. But we're not talking about a Minstate 64 or Minstate 65 barber uh, quarter here. We're talking about just an, a plain Jane MS62. Up next is a little bit of a barber, it's a barber dime with some color, which is nice. You can take a look at the rim here. Uh, you, you can see some really nice blues, a little bit of oranges here hugging the date, and kind of a pink overglaze of the coin. I don't think it's been retoned uh, per se. I think it's just where it was held. Uh, I think this coin is pretty nice and original. I don't see too many uh, issues with it. Don't see any distracting spots or scratches. And I think it's just a nice phenomenal coin. 
I would give this one a green sticker based on the qualities that I see. If I saw anything that was more distracting, I probably wouldn't. But I think it's just a nice, beautiful coin, and I do enjoy the toning more than most people uh, do, just because the colors are kind of, it complements the coin. It doesn't take away from uh, the eye appeal, and that's something that John talks a little bit about in, uh, when he was talking about color with Seth Chandler, and you guys can watch that interview down below if you want to check out what he said. It's a 1915D uh, Barber Half, grade V of 35. And so this coin I think is nice, but I'm not sure what he thinks about the darkness of it. And there's kind of some halos around the ring, uh, the rim. I'm sorry, the halos around the stars here. Um, and so maybe there's some old cleaning that happened around these stars, as you can see, and they kind of filled back in with a different color. That for me is a concern on this coin. I do think it's a you know a nice circulated piece. I do enjoy the you know the kind of the darkness of the color, but I'm not sure how they would feel about it. Uh, the reverse is a little bit more white. A few kind of spots here in America, but nothing too uh, crazy. I like the piece overall, though. I think it'll do well, um, but uh, we'll have to see. But for right now, I'm getting a little bit stricter in what I what I believe, and I always start off kind of ha you know hitting the hammer down instead of you know giving out grades that are you know super super generous. And so I would say that coin is uh, probably a no cac for the time being. Up next, the 1915D Barber Quarter. This one's a great MS61 by NGC. Still some remaining luster on the coin, as you can see. Just a little bit hugging in the fields here around the stars. Nothing that I would say is old cleaning in, in, in any way. It has some kind of interesting toning, which does take away from its luster. When you flip over the coin, luster is a little bit more strong and apparent on the reverse. You can see that just uh, going, you know, a little bit of like a cartwheel. But I think this one was graded pretty conservatively. I do think this one has a shot at being a green sticker, but possibly gold. Who knows? I think, uh, you know, we might get lucky in this batch. I know we've been getting lucky in the past, but that one looks pretty nice. I, I would uh, definitely keep that if I was a barber collector just because, I mean, I think it has some strong eye appeal. And I do like that holder as well. 1909 Barber Half. We got the graded VF30. Another dark piece here. You can see the kind of the darkness around the stars and the rim. But uh, nothing that's too distracting. But you can kind of see some heavy wear here and on uh, kind of on the leaves and on the forehead. But I don't know if that'll play too much into uh, John's analysis of it. I just think those are kind of glaring spots um, of rub. And when you uh, look at the reverse, I feel the reverse has been old, has some old cleaning to it. And I don't think John would cack it based on that personally. And there's kind of a big, huge black spot, like a few black spots right above uh, the tip of the wing. And that, for me uh, alone, would really hold this coin back. I would grade this one a no cac also. Switching up a little bit here with uh, a 1995 double die uh, obverse. This one is Lincoln Scent. They do cac these because it is a variety, a double die variety. And... Off the bat, I see the color on here is kind of interesting. Not sure if uh, John would compliment the toning or or wouldn't like the toning. He might say it's discoloration, or he might just say, oh, it's unique and people might like it. And so, um, you know, I don't see too many problems on the coin. I see a few hits in front of the nose here, but that's something that's not too bad at all. Uh, kind of change of color on the reverse as well. And the good thing that the color, you know, the color on the coin is still red. So sometimes in these older holders, they have, uh, you know, colors turn in holders sometimes, especially when they're held in hot areas or places where uh, they really shouldn't be held. And so I don't see any too, any issues really pr or problems with this coin. I say it would be probably a nice solid uh, green cac. And so uh, taking a, a risk on that one just because I wanted to see what what happened with it but I do think it's a nice coin I, I didn't see too many problems especially for it being that low of grade a lot of the ones that you see right now are 67 68s um, and so this is a 1927 uh, SOQ I see I mean I see the date right here is really nice and prominent the rim is still intact here it's great VGA it's a little bit of a tougher date which is the reason why people send it in um, taking a look there's a kind of a scratch underneath here um, and there's kind of like an old cleaning on the whole reverse of this coin so when we're taking a look at the the obverse I feel like there's not many things that would distract it 
there's not like a whiteness to it either. When you flip it over and you see angle it down, you can see like this white overglaze to the coin. You see that? Um, I feel like this coin may have had some old cleaning on the reverse, which, um, you know, it all really depends on what John thinks, but I do, don't think this one will do well. I think this one will have no CAC sticker. Next up is this 1937S Buffalo Nickel, created MS66 by PCGS. has a nice kind of color, full hue to the obverse of the coin. See a little sheen in front of the face here, a few kind of hits. But you take a look at the face, I mean, I think the strike's pretty strong. And I don't, I don't see too many problems with the coin. Kind of a few light scuffs here and there on the face, but a decent little buffalo nickel. When you flip it over, don't see any kind of distracting haze as you would normally see on some of the older kind of holders. And uh, you can kind of see this little rub here on the holder, which is not a problem. But nice little strong strike. The buffalo's horn's really nice. I do think this one would green cack based on just the qualities that I see. Just a nice beautiful coin and uh, yeah, very based in its grading and nothing that really took away from its uh, kind of eye appeal. Here is 1936 Buffalo Nickel. This one's a great MS64 and an OGH holder. And uh, when you kind of angle it down a little bit, there's a little bit of haze um, hugging the back of the head here. And uh, the rest is just luster in front of the face. You can kind of see this sheen here again, which I think is kind of normal, but really kind of a weak strike here um, on the center of the head and on the cheek and that for me is just a no bueno but I know this coin's great MS64 when you flip it over got a little haze uh, you know as you can see a little bit of hugging this rim here but I kind of see a softness and strike also on this leg and kind of moving a little bit up that uh, that shoulder but I mean I think it's a nice coin I just don't think it would cack personally I'll give this one a, uh, a no sticker. Two more coins to show you today. This is a 1909 Barber Half, graded BF30. Um, and I think there's kind of a big, huge scratch here on the coin. A little bit of those halos going around it as well. I think Barbers are one of the strictest coins um, at CAC to be stickered. That's just what I've seen personally. Not really have checking population reports, but I mean, just a very tough series in terms of uh, what they'll allow to like, like, you know, go through and pass. Rim ding here, as you can see, really nice dark reverse, but I think it might be too dark. And so a lot of things on this coin just say no to me, and that's just how it is um, from my opinion. But like I said, I could always be wrong. I would give this one a no sticker as well. And uh, we have 1892 Barber Dime. Great MS62 by NGC. Now we're checking for luster on this coin because it still needs some in state luster, in my opinion. And this one doesn't really have any on the obverse. As you can see, it's just nothing really on that. Uh, flipping it over, it's got some luster in the center of the coin, but nothing that I really scream home about. And like I said, though, it's very tough to get CAC stickers on these coins. And so that's why. Uh, you know, Trent tries to send as many in as possible to see what he would think, get better at it, and also, uh, you know, add to his collection. He wants a whole CAC Barber set, and he wants to, you know, build up grades and do a whole bunch of great stuff, but I don't think that coin would CAC personally. The luster for me, there's none there, and uh, you really need some nice luster if you want to get at least the Men's State uh, category with the CAC sticker. It's the 1931 Mercury Dime, great MS63 full bands. Take a look at this coin, it's got a little bit of uh, color on the rim here, and uh, I think it's nice, it has a really nice cheek. Uh, there are a few scratches, I don't know if it's just polish lines or scratches, but you can see like there's a lot of lines going like this, right behind the head. I'm not sure if that's something to do with uh, the minting process, um, you know, just something that happened over time. It's kind of a little spotty here on the reverse, you can see some distracting spots. This one's really unattractive and you have color hugging the rim here and kind of another distracting spot. But I don't think this one really, um, you know, I don't think it really is, uh, I'm not, it's not a bad MS63 full bands personally. I think this one has a shot of green, possibly gold based on what I see here. And uh, I can't wait to see what happens with this one. I think Trent will really like it and uh, maybe it'll, maybe it'll sticker and that will add some value to it. But thank you guys for uh, watching this part of the video. Let's cut it to the outro.
Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you guys did enjoy today's video, please leave a like. New coins like this are going on up our website all the time. Seventeen ninety eight, uh, drape us dollar. I mean, just you don't want to miss it. All right, comment down below what you think of this video, and uh, you know where's what's what's going on with CAC. Do you think they should reopen? Even though it's a longer wait time, we would love to hear that down below. Subscribe if you're new because new videos coming out every single week. But yeah, we'll see you guys in Friday's episode.